2014 marks the 100th anniversary of the beginning of the First World War. Far from being a war to end all wars, or a victory for democracy, this was a military disaster and a human catastrophe. We are disturbed, therefore, to hear that David Cameron plans to spend £55 million on truly national commemorations to mark this <coughs> anniversary. Mr Cameron has quite inappropriately compared these to the Diamond Jubilee celebrations and stated that their aim will be to stress our national spirit, that they will be run at least in part by former generals and ex-defence secretaries reveals just how misconceived these plans are. Instead, we believe it is important to remember that this was a war that was driven by big powers' competition for influence around the globe and caused a degree of suffering all too clear in the statistical record of 16 million people dead and 20 million wounded. In 2014, we and others across the world will be organising cultural, political and educational activities to mark the courage of many involved in the war, but also to remember the almost unimaginable devastation caused. In a time of international tension, we call on writers, actors, musicians, teachers and campaigners to join with us to ensure that this anniversary <coughs> is used to promote peace and international cooperation. And this is a poem written in 2009 um, by Caroline Duffy. In all my dreams, before my helpless sight, he plunges at me, guttering, <coughs> choking, drowning. If poetry could tell it backwards, true, begin. That moment shrapnel scythed you to the stinking mud. But you get up, amazed. Watch bled bad blood run upwards from the slime into its wounds. See lines and lines of British boys rewind back to their trenches. Kiss the photographs from home. Mothers, sweethearts, sisters, younger brothers not entering the story now. To die and die and die. Dolce, no. Decorum, no, no, pro patria mori. You walk away, you walk away, drop your gun, fixed bayonet, like all your mates do too. Harry, Tommy, Wilfred, Edward, Bert. And light a cigarette. There's coffee in the square, warm French bread, and all those thousands dead are shaking dried mud from their hair and queuing up for home, freshly alive. A lad plays Tipperary to the crowd, released from history. The glistening, healthy horses fit for heroes. Kings. You lean against a wall. Your several million lives still possible and crammed with love, work, Children, talent, English beer, good food. You see the poet tuck away his pocketbook and smile. If poetry could truly tell it backwards, then it would. This in 19... 17, after the death of one of his friends. Declaration against the war. I am making this statement as an act of willful defiance of military authority, because I believe that the war is being deliberately prolonged by those who have the power to end it. I am a soldier, convinced that I am acting on behalf of soldiers. I believe that this war on which I entered as a war of defense and liberation has now become a war of aggression and conquest. I believe that the purpose for which I and my fellow soldiers entered upon this war should have been so clearly stated as to have made it impossible to change them and that had this been done the objects which actuated us would now be attainable by negotiation. 
I have seen and endured the sufferings of the troops, and I can no longer be a party to prolong these sufferings for ends which I believe to be evil and unjust. I am not protesting against the conduct of the war, but against the political errors and insincerities for which the fighting men are being sacrificed. On behalf of those who are suffering now, I make this protest against the deception which is being practiced on them. Also, I believe that I may help to destroy the callous complacency with which the majority of those at home regard the contrivance of agonies which they do not and which they have not sufficient imagination to realize. Uh, this is just one of many amazing stories in this book. This is ordinary seaman Joe Murray, Hood Battalion, Royal Navy Division. He says, dysentery was a truly awful disease that could rob a man of the last vestiges of human dignity before it killed him. A couple of weeks before getting it, my old pal was as smart and upright as a guardsman. Yet after about ten days, it was dreadful to see him crawling about his trousers round his feet, his backside hanging out, his shirt all soiled, everything was soiled, he couldn't even walk. So I took him by one arm and another pal got hold of him by the other and we dragged him to the latrine. It was degrading when you remember how he was just a little while ago. Neither my other pal nor I were very good either, but we weren't as bad as that. Anyway, we lowered him down next to the latrine. We tried to keep the flies off him and to turn him round, put his backside towards the trench. But he simply rolled into this one foot wide trench, half sideways, head first in the slime. We couldn't pull him out, we didn't have enough strength, and he couldn't help himself at all. We did eventually get him out, but he was dead. He drowned in his own excrement. So, there's a bit of the glory of war for you. <laughs>